Alrighty, y'all. It is Cody from Keepers of Nerdum, and it was the last episode of Invincible. Yup. Season two. I do believe. This is, season, this is episode eight, so it should be it. This is it. Unless they just surprise us next week and be like, hello, there's number nine. Let's hope so. That would be awesome. All right. Um, we're also joined by our friend Blaine, but he's off camera. Oh. Gowron is always here because he likes to. I'm always pointing in the wrong direction. Most of the time, I'm covering him up. So yes, you are. So freakishly tall. All right. Thoughts on the last episode of Invincible Season 2. Give your first I'm impressions. Really fast paced, honestly. So much happened in that, you know, what was it, 53 minutes? 54 minutes. Just a lot. Yeah. A lot to take in, a um, lot to consider, a lot of new questions. Um, some still left unanswered. So, okay. yeah. All right. Good things, really good things, though. We will so, you that. liked it? Yes. We'll, we'll talk about our rating at the end, but you liked it. Yes, a lot. Okay. Blaine. I thought it was really good. Um, I have been watching more of the episodes now. So, um, I think two technical scenes of Amber from one camera span to the other. A uh, bird's eye view versus a back view. She was only in it for a few seconds. She didn't say a single thing. It was beautiful. Didn't have to hear her voice. So the breakup is over. Is officially, as far as we can tell? I think so. It wasn't said on screen, but it looks like Mark and Amber are toast. Okay. It looks like... Finally. Him and Eve is going to happen. <laughs> Hopefully. Please. <laughs> Except for Mark is we'll the... We'll touch on that, though. The quintessential, it like, didn't happen yet. anime lead character that goes, I'm never going to express my feelings to the person. <laughs> Yeah. I, Eve, I want to, uh, never mind. Ah, I don't know. I will <laughs> never talk to you about relationship stuff ever. But me and Amber talked every five minutes, and we had to watch every time. Anyway, um, I'm not going to say much right now. Why don't you guys kind of walk us He through? is angry, and I'm sure he will explain soon. <laughs> <laughs> you assume I'm angry! Because you, you said you like were. You're angry. I. You said you have a rant. I said I have a rant. Doesn't mean I'm angry. Rant? So a... There could be positive rants. So you have an aggravated rant. Maybe. A very, (laughs) very passionate (laughs) rant. Let's put it that way. I'll I'll get there. All right. Walk us through. Uh, Basics of the episode. So, wait. A really, really (laughs) long fight. Where Where did we start start? off? There's there's a ton ton of stuff in this episode. It's just crazy. And, like, the major plot points kind of overtake the subplots. Well, let's let's do it. Then again, there wasn't a whole lot of subplot in this. Well, let's do what we've done, then. Barely any. Where we we focus on each little story piece that's as focus. Um, So, for example, one focus piece is obviously Angstrom Levy or Levy. I remember what the beginning was. It was, um, we're watching Omni-Man get beat up. Mm. And Mars Boy. Okay, obviously spoilers, by the way. That's right. So we we have... I don't know, the alien dude. Oh, Alan the alien. Yeah. Okay. So we have the prison, and that's a running theme somewhat throughout the episode in little spurts. Yeah. Of Nolan being prepared back to healthy... Then beat up. Then Alan shows up, and at the very end, they conversate. And what what is Nolan's big thing that Alan's a little bit even taken aback by what he says? That like he just is kind of accepted his fate. Like he doesn't really want to make any changes. He's just going to pay for what he did. He wants Mark to be left out of this galactic war that is about to ensue. Yep. And he also misses Debbie. Yeah. He also feels bad about uh, his doings. Like he has mercy and like remorse. Feels, yeah, remorse. Yeah, and feels bad. He's like, I kill people. That's wrong. <laughs> oh, really? I, I Is love it now? where he explains it in such a way that he goes, "I actually feel compassion and care for lesser species that are <laughs> yeah that- vulnerable." And Alan's Alan's reaction was like. 
And you think that's a bad thing? <laughs> right. That's wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, if you really do think about it, the Veltramites were pretty much brainwashed from birth that they are the superior race, so... I mean, they've also been brainwashed to think that that mustache is actually, like... The, Tom, they, just, they just all look like J.K. Simmons, apparently. And Tom Selleck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> from Well, Magnum P.I. is always that, that right. thing on uh, uh, Will. Is that his name? Mark's friend? Yeah. yeah. On his, his wall in college. <laughs> I just want to see them with like one of those weird, like swirly, long mustaches. Right. Just start putting like different General mustaches. General should have there. had that, like a really big, you know, handlebar mustache. Yeah, yeah, that would have been awesome. So that's that's been a a good, interesting piece, and there wasn't a ton of action in there, but yet there was. Whenever uh, Nolan got to beat some stuff up, and we got to. Oh see yeah, him. totally. So the other major focal point. I guess that really is most of this episode is Mark. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it because Mark there's so good. much going on. Yeah, but really, I mean, it is all about Mark at this episode, pretty yeah. much. So Angstrom has Debbie and Oliver held at teleporter point. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Pretty much. Is a portal I'm going to teleport them to death. Or something. I love that his his plan for them is to teleport them to a, another dimension that was eight feet different than this one. I thought it was eight stories tall. Eight That's stories, right. yeah. Eight eight sorry, the ground stories. is eight stories lower than this. Yeah, story. I apologize. Good catch. <laughs> this is eight feet wouldn't be enough. Because apparently, Debbie can survive everything. Mostly. Arm. Gone. But... What walk us through it, Will? Like what what goes on with with Angstrom and the teleporting and Mark? I mean, he is trying to kill Mark. I mean, not by throwing him around these different universes, but he's just trying to weaken him so that he can very much take the final blow and kill him with his bare hands. Yeah. Can I end with something? Absolutely. Does not work. <laughs> One of the best parts about this episode were the British dinosaurs. <laughs> so, the weird speaking British dinosaurs are like, "Oh, <laughs> is this is this one of these humans? Yeah, right, and it, it can speak. talk. Yes. Oh, with like that weird high class mm. speaking. Yep. Oh, brain freeze. Ow. <laughs> okay." <sighs> Sorry, you guys keep talking. It'll take me a second. This hurts. Ah. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts so bad. Like... <laughs> Can you imagine the brain freezes that Angstrom would get? It must be horrific. Does he have brains in his butt? Because I think he does. How far down is his brain? Oh, it hurts so bad. Ouch. <laughs> Just punch your head. <laughs> um, okay. Like I, like One of the most one. dangerous things for a show ever to do is multiverse. And even Marvel got in trouble with that stuff because then it just opens up everything and makes it dangerously not important. Here's the rant. I don't know about not Actually, important. No. Really? This isn't the rant. I was expecting this to be the rant. This is not the rant. But I think this was handled well. It was. Um, they inputted the universes, and I think the only important universes was the one where he just showed Mark and Omni-Man killing people. Yeah. And that was what I would say would be most important, because the ones he actually sent him through, we got Talking Dinosaurs, mm -hmm. Robot World was one of them, oh, group yeah. therapy session at a campfire, right? some bandits that he murdered, or whatever happened. Group therapy session. Yes. But none of them were, like, important other than, uh, I don't know, I'm going to call him Brainiac. His flashbacks. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the, yeah, the jumping wasn't necessarily directly important. They had fun with it because it was just, it didn't actually take away from the focus of it because his issue was Angstrom can't get past the fact that he's got so many minds in his head that he can't see Mark as Mark here and now. Right. And we had some amazing scenes because now 
We have seen Spider Man, <laughs> Doc Ock. Did they? You didn't even Batman. give him a name, did Batman. they? Batman. Um, they didn't they give said Professor s- Ock. Professor Ock for Doc Ock. I don't they, remember if they, they gave a name they, to the they gave a name Spider-Man, Spider-Man guy Spider-Man that had an A on his chest and was the yeah. voice actor, I think, for you noticed uh, the Spider-Man. The A? Invincible Spy- the Invincible Spy- I don't know. It was one of the animated episodes. Familiar, the A? And what if it's just like Arachna guy or something? <laughs> <laughs> Arachnid man. Arachnid Arachnid. man. <laughs> but th- they were kind of pointless scenes, and you don't see Batman, but he goes, you call yourself a man? And a bat. Like a bat. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just seems is, lazy. Yeah. <laughs> seems lazy. Yeah. It was it was just such a good, funny little like So apparently he's teleporting for a lot longer than we actually like see fully. Yeah. Um It was interesting. Like the fight that you thought between him and Angstrom was just gonna be the most boring, silly thing. Angstrom had been upgraded. Right. And apparently, I didn't realize he was actually like that powerful. Well, I don't yeah. think he really was because <laughs> I mean, he, uh, yeah, I thought you were stronger. Yeah. So <laughs> what happens in the end? Finally, Mark does catch him, and it's after Angstrom has threatened multiple times. Debbie okay. And one thing that. though, huh? Is how many times Mark falls through the stupid like? Oh, I'm gonna kill your mom. Nope. Teleport. Bye bye. Yeah, well, oh, I mean, I'm to be, kill your mutt yeah, exactly. bye bye. I love the therapy session around the campfire where he's like, oh. he just, I just, I move and I dodge, and and then there's a portal right next to me, and I don't know. But he keeps, he, <laughs> I mean, I Angstrom keeps doing these cheap tricks to get him through the portals. Like he took a pocket knife and threw it straight at Debbie. Yeah. And in order for Mark to catch the knife, he throws a like he throws a portal right in front of Mark as he's flying to catch the knife, and he catches the knife and goes through the portal. It's like it's just stupid cheap tricks. Yeah, yeah. And also, we even now we've noticed Mark doesn't actually have the capability of stopping himself as well as he thinks he can. Right. Like his flying skills are still not up to obviously Nissa's and uh, Omni Man's. Just being able to. Insta stop. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh no, there I go. Yeah, we're right. gonna see it happen once, and then he's never gonna do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so on the the last planet where they start fighting after Angstrom has punched him through several dimensions, Mark, I mean, loses it because the last he had seen was. Did he actually see Debbie get her arm broken? He didn't see it. No, he saw, he saw that after. Her arm yeah, was broken. Okay. And Debbie, Debbie got a swipe or two in on Angstrom. And yeah, she did. It was cool. Slid, slid him in the chest with broken porcelain. Yeah, and Angstrom just laughed it off. And you're like, that's blood coming out of you. And then we find out why he's laughing because he's way stronger than he looks. Wipes right. blood on her face. And she's like, did you have, didn't you wipe more blood than that? Yeah. It's like a small little. For context, he was basically having a monologue saying that like, Mark has done horrible, awful things across the multiverse, and that in even some universes, Debbie joins Mark and um, Nolan in conquering Earth, and that you know Debbie turned on her own people, and that her family's legacy is blood. And then he wipes his blood on her face mm. just to kind of rub it in some more. So stupid side note to that: that's funny to even hear, right? Like, it's like congrats. As from season one, what did Nolan call her? A pet. A pet. And Debbie so apparently is up on a little throne going, yes, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> In some other dimensions that we never saw. But yeah, they never showed us. Never showed her. And Mark's outfits through the different dimensions are strange. <laughs> one had toe socks. One of them was- <laughs> what, were, what were those toe shoes called? Nasty. I can't remember what they were, but I used to have a pair of them. I know what you're talking about, yeah. They were strange. Yeah. One was just his suit, but instead of it being, I think it was just all black and then the yellow. Yeah, it was black and yellow with like a big yellow cape. Yeah. Yeah. That one was actually a cool design. The weird, I don't know, Auschwitz looking place where he just went cutting. Right. Oh, yeah. The prison. Yeah, he was. They had like prisoners on their knees lined up, and uh, Invincible would just walk alongside them and just like karate chop their head off. So pause on that. We're c- clarification. Different dimensions. Angstrom reliving some of his other memories. Yes. Of Mark and everything that's happened. 
just so we're clear, it's not Mark of normal universe. Yes. <laughs> but very creepy scene. I think the more creepy scene, at least for me, was like, don't worry, I'll make killing your kid quick. And just... Right. Just that one was terrible. It was yeah. like the first one. Oh, okay, like, okay. Oh, you yeah. think you could hide and from he, me? And he was just yeah, like so was like cheery about it. Yeah. yeah. Like but he it, just takes like satisfaction. Well, he hasn't seen people. that though either. He hasn't seen episode one when we were uh, introduced to Angstrom of season two. Yeah. Where that, we see that kind of a mark where he's very murdery, happy about the oh yeah crazy oh where they start off in the alternate dimension yeah Yeah, we don't know it yeah and then that's that's the dimension where he breaks uh adam eve's neck no he doesn't yeah that's right he 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 doesn't yeah paralyzes her that's what i mean is just just in the right spot she looks really weird in that (laughs) yes okay so i totally forgot about what does mark do to angstrom on this this deserted planet uh, basically, um, makes his head no longer exist yeah, pretty with, much his, with his fists. And it doesn't actually show it. No, it doesn't. I was a little shocked he, by that. Like with the amount of blood that was everywhere, yeah, his head definitely exploded. Yep. And then Mark finally realizes what he's done because he was so like upset just, right. and like, I mean, like, literally after he's done killing him, there's, like, a blurriness in his eyes that begins to fade as he calms down. So, like, he was just... Not really like seeing red, but I mean, he was, get, he was getting red. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of red. Yeah, it was a lot. But it was a powerful a moment because then he's he's like almost going crazy trying to talk himself back to normalcy and realizing he's now taken someone's life. Right. And it's that interesting thing of would this be murder or not? Because it's that interesting thing of I don't really think it was murder. It, it's a self defense of yeah. his family, but it's like uh, it's, it's so that's the complicated part of it. That's what's really interesting because you watch him like I think he talked to Batman too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he there. definitely did have to get blood on his hands in order to stop that madness. So yeah, either way, it is a life taken, which Mark didn't necessarily want to. I mean, he did really try to reason with this guy, yeah. but he just wouldn't have it. And it does beg so. an interesting question. Could this could Angstrom actually have ever been subdued and kept somewhere in a prison? I don't know. Where Probably does his not. power for teleporting come from? Because you obviously it came from hands to an extent, but is it really just the mind? I think it is just the mind. Yeah. So, um, because I mean, he didn't really have to have his hand open to keep that portal open around. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Debbie and Oliver. Yeah, it was just there was times where you would see energy around his hand. I'm sure when whenever he has his hand open, it might be more concentrated, but I'm sure that it can just be opened at will without mm-hmm. any specific gesture. Maybe you could almost keep him like in a drug-induced, barely conscious, right, like, or just straight-up coma. Yeah, a medically-induced coma. I mean, it, it's just kind of crazy to think, because something with that kind of power is just super dangerous all around. Right. Um, once Mark finally comes to his senses, the reality starts hitting him. He's on a, a world where... It's completely barren. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, and I don't think he's ever quite figured this out yet, because he really hasn't been out in a deep space on his own. Just because Earth is gone doesn't mean the galaxy is gone. Right. Um, I never really thought about that too much, but I think if I'm right, what they said when the people arrived, um, that's the reality where Mark is not on Earth. Like, he goes missing from Earth. That's that Earth. Interesting. Interesting, good catch. I, I yeah, I did not catch that either. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah, they're like, this is the Earth that where you are missing. Yeah, so there's no huh. way for him to get back because Angstrom's dead. And then shortly thereafter, who appears? The alternate <laughs> universe guardians of the globe. Yeah, and we see older versions of several of them, and then two new people. One an old Chad. guy with a hammer. Chad, the definition of a Chad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then some old older lady with boxing gloves. And then the rest of, who's the other people from the, uh, the old Monster, Monster, Monster Girl, Girl yep. and, and Rex what's, inside what's supposed of to be the robot. robot's suit. Yeah, super weird. And he's smart. Yeah, he is smart. So what or if it's it like the, kid, the robot? Is it just robot? Because that's Well, she Rex, called him like Rex. Rex. Yeah. yeah. So it's And I, he does not go as by Rex. Robot yeah. does not. Because he has a different name. What's his actual name? Rudy. Rudy. So, 
And there's one other person on there, Bulletproof. Is that was his name? The yeah. in the suit that Invincible didn't want, and now we've always seen that suit all the time. Yeah. Um, they For actually character. just yeah. help him get back to his reality in time. Yeah, they're like, "This is the Earth that happens if you're that blah, when you're missing." So we we came up with this, so this would not happen. Yeah, and. Uh, right before he goes back, Adam Eve, who doesn't look just 20 years older. She looks 30, she 30 plus. Uh, I, I think they 40. said 20. I thought it was 40. All right. Well, she, looked, she looked like mid-30s, early 40s. Well, what was she the was time old. frame that they said? 20 years. Okay. I thought it was 40. Well, wait, I, well they looked older. They did. That's what like, I was but like, they said. He, they said Mark went missing 20 years ago. Which also, like, I wonder, like, what is up with that? Like, Mark going missing. That just sounds yeah. ominous. Yeah, very much so. But what does Adam Eve tell Mark? That the most joyous news I've ever heard in the show. Adam Eve so loves him. And that even if, you know, he reciprocates the feelings or not, he needs to tell Adam Eve something. Whether it's that he loves her too or he doesn't love her, Adam Eve just needs an answer from Mark. Which is awesome to finally hear. And it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> At least not this episode. Mark almost goes through with it. Mark no, just goes completely mean. lunatic mode and kills a guy, but can't tell a girl that he loves her. He's he's dealing with a few things. Mark and his wonderful relationship skills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we just like have He William? sure does know how to pick him, doesn't he? Can we just have <laughs> William right there and just like Tell him. She's like, hey, I'm, I'm the translator here. <laughs> Please. So when he gets back, he's doing a lot of flying and struggling and talking with Cecil and he almost flies, talks like, stupid fast. Yeah. Like he was like having like, rainbow, rainbow light around yeah. him. Like he was well, just going crazy fast. That's, that's how you set the atmosphere on fire. Don't do that. <laughs> right. Like bro was going past hypersonic. As speeds. a side note, couldn't a Viltramite do that? I mean, yeah, we did see um, Omni-Man do that. He flew so fast that he superheated the air and killed the Flaxons. Like, he was basically, mm -hmm. like, how fast he flew, he was basically having nukes going off behind him. That's true. With how, oh, yeah. like, how the That's air just so exploded behind him. <laughs> so that good. was such a <laughs> nutty... That was probably one of my favorite scenes out of this show. Is when he right. just goes completely right. nuts yeah. on those Flaxons. I don't think they're all gone, though. I think there's still more of them because he did he did leave and use no, the died. last bit of their technology. No, he dropped the thing. He off. did, but that doesn't mean the whole planet. I'm almost wondering if. I mean, did you see how big that was? That was. I know. I, I know. mean, if an asteroid all like that, Ultron, if an asteroid like that hit saying, Earth, right? That's exactly what I'm all saying. All I'm saying that is exactly it. They live in a dimension that goes faster, and they could rebuild, and they come back and show back up, and it's been like a thousand years for them, or whatever. And it's been, you know, a year here. I feel like they should have learned their lesson. Even if that. there was only four people that survived on a space station. <sighs> Repopulate their whole planet. <laughs> We're I'm just back. saying. We're back. <laughs> and it's just going to be the one guy with the eye thing. Yeah, that's somehow. <laughs> no, he, he died. <laughs> he died. Omni-Man oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Omni ran he through him, the whole planet. Yeah, he put him <laughs> through numerous buildings. And he was nothing Rushed more. Space yeah. Yeah. Just turns out there's, there's a no way he should. Many, but many buildings. Just a, they a clone screen him. with them. Just a screen yeah. that has his face. I'm back. <laughs> can I just unplug you? They downloaded my consciousness <laughs> to a supercomputer, so now I can live forever. What if I unplug you? <laughs> Don't yeah. do that. No, 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 wait. <laughs> no, dang it. Um, okay. So, so we get probably the worst scene of the entire episode. Mark almost goes and talks to Amber. But he doesn't. But he doesn't. But we had to see Amber. We almost made it. I feel like I feel like they had to have episode. some sort of closure to that. And even I feel like that's the best way to end it. He just kind of looks at her and like kind of thinks about going to talk to her, but then just flies off. Incorrect, Will. We saw the best way to end it in one of the alternate realities for Angstrom Levy when his wife got impaled by a pole. <laughs> Amber. Yes. So we wouldn't for the have to ever for the route, show up again. For the violent route, yes. <laughs> but for this route, 
Best way possible. Absolutely yeah. zero dialogue. Just leaving it there in silence. Yeah. Beautiful. We didn't have to. It's the beautiful him. Irish goodbye that I've needed for a very <laughs> long time. Just not saying a single word, <laughs> leaving, just, just heading out. He's completely leaving because he's leaving college too. Yeah. yeah. So he's just like. He's just like, I'm, I'm dipping. <laughs> See ya. Out. In my life, her, not anymore. That's Fun. true. Yep. That's true. Okay. Is there anything else you guys remember we need to hit on? Alan, the alien, and Ani men. We already did that. We already did that, yes. Okay. There is, oh, I forgot one other piece that's really randomly important. We have a little scene with Robot and Monster Girl, which is whatever. Cute, ha ha ha, but awkward. Weird. Yeah. It, it's really it's just weird. weird. <laughs> it's no, nice that they, you but know, the important made scene up. is our favorite superhero of weirdness, Immortal. Ooh. Go ahead, that's go ahead. right. We guessed it. Duplicate is still alive. What number? Zero. <laughs> She's ground zero, just like we predicted. So, yep. That that is a thing that's happening. And Immortal was quite happy. Yes. The the thousands plus year old was very excited that the twenty four year old. Their was relationship alive. is so strange. I will never crazy. understand. I'll never understand it. It's so, so it's so off putting every time I see them together. Amber. It's so weird. Yeah. It we, might even just be weirder than Amber and Mark. Which one would you rather watch? I would rather watch Mark and Amber, honestly. Really? What? I don't want to see a like multi thousand year old being get it on with a twenty year old. That's just Well no, nobody wants to watch that. Yikes. Well, I mean we pretty much almost did see it happen. Oh my like, <laughs> him coming out of the shower with like five of her. Ugh. I don't even want to begin to think about that. Yo, what is it with her and <laughs> doing dudes in the shower? Okay, stop. Stop. No, stop. no seriously, because Rex, Rex, too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Gosh. Yeah. No. Right, we're going very weird. off course here. It's gross. It's disgusting. I know. It's disturbing in the show, and it's weird, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> She's kinky. Stop. <laughs> okay. Since you guys yeah, can't that, handle that went yourselves... Over the line. Just a little. Yeah, you all can't handle yourselves. I think it's time for my rant. <laughs> Here we go. It's gonna be we, we finally provoked it. Okay. Um, there are two things in this episode that... Well, there's three things that really get me. Three. Two of them are pointless. But it's first one, one of them. Amber showing up at all. She ruins it just because we were almost there. We were so close. Yeah. And then Blaine had to mention that she might show up. Because she was going to. It was yeah, you, you said it, and then she did. That's, it's your fault. She was in the recap, too. Number two. The recaps aren't the same thing. They're just looking back at the past week. It was still right, but it's still, it's still giving context for what's about yeah, to be brought it's, up it's, during it's, the it's episode. It's a past. It's Rafiki stick. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. That is... Number two. They don't understand. Number two. <laughs> Mark has a black eye oh on his God. right eye. Here it is. Debbie has a black eye on her right eye. No one has a black eye on his right eye. And they look identical. They, yeah, they are that, drawn that is, the exact That is true. That, that model is definitely overused at this over point. Over and they over. Need the only difference is... left eye going. All three of them have different eyebrows. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's so uh, weird. It is Why does this whole family, except for Oliver, because he can't have a black eye because he's already purple. He can't have the purple eye because he already has them. It's just going to make it look bumpy. <laughs> it's going to actually just turn physically just black and blue instead of purple. Right. It'll just make it turn tan. It'll actually, be, it'll actually be a black eye. It's just completely black. Yes. It was just such a stupidly weird thing. It's like, why is it that the animators do so well with so much of this stuff and then they all have a black eye in the, the same eye and it's drawn the same way and it's weird. And it looks like, and at one point I was just like, at this point, I just want somebody to walk up to each other with their black eyes no, and stop, awkwardly stop. kiss their black eyes because uh, they look like weird, puffy uh, lips that some person in California got cosmetic surgery and went, do I look attractive? And you're like, no. But the word kinky was too much. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, the real rant, though. I want to see people's eyes kiss. Okay. <laughs> Because it looked like lips for freaking eyelids. You didn't have it to say weird. it. Though. It was weird. Anyway, the the last thing that really gets me. 
this episode was, at least in my mind, really daggum close to a 10. Yeah. Only thing that keeps it, honestly, is the, those silly things, just in a little way. But the other thing that really, in a way, keeps it from that is the fact that we had to sit through some of these episodes to get to an episode that was action-packed, that was story-driven, that that was finally, intense. Finally, a season one-like episode. Yes! Yes! We finally got one. That! At the very end of the season. Yeah, it's because very frustrating. The beginning of the season kind of almost felt like we were we were building you know, we were up, getting like back we into were, that groove, and then it just boring. Yeah, and even the stuff that was leading up was still slower. So it was like, uh, okay, we're gonna yeah, because be they just they just world built for like four episodes straight, and then we finally started getting onto some decent plot points, and then we fiddle farted around with Amber <laughs> for half an episode for the past two episodes, and now we're finally have our like great, you know. Back to our original formula that works. Yeah. That was what was keeping us really hooked during season one. Yes. You need to be more mad. Get more mad, I, I am mad. I'm just not this, visibly frustrated. But this, I. But it's just, I'm finally relieved. Let's put it that way. I've, <laughs> I've been mad this whole time. This is my relief here. <laughs> because we're finally getting this episode after so long. But that's the problem. Why did it take so long? Yeah, get, go. Come on. Why did it get take so long? Up. Get mad. You guys had a perfectly working formula from the beginning, and yes. then you had to change it. Why? Go! Why? Go, get Why him. did you make Amber do a 180 and be all weird? <laughs> Why couldn't we have just gotten this done during the beginning of the season and get all... We wanted to world build so bad. Why couldn't we also do some more character development and get rid of this Amber stuff early on so we can focus on these main plot points that actually make the show interesting and fun to watch? And I, I hate to say it, I think the unfortunate thing is they wanted to slow it down because they didn't have stuff ready. Because well, we were... Be ready next time. We were piddle I would have rather waited a whole other year to watch this if it means it would have had a season one rhythm to it. Amen. Get it right before you put it out. We don't need... Hey, Bethesda, take some notes about Fallout 76, okay? Yeah. And Cyberpunk 2077. It got better. I, have we not learned from our mistakes that putting out an unfinished product... Generally makes the people that want to see it very angry. Yep. But what you just said too, Blaine, is it got better. Why did it get better? Because they added stuff in after the fact. Fallout 76 didn't have NPCs when it first came right, out. Right, and now they have that NPCs and it's sense. one of the main like like it's one of the main mechanics of the game. It's talking to NPCs right. and doing quests given by NPCs when the beginning of the game was you just walking around with whoever else was in the server and just doing the Fallout stuff. Yes. So we come back to Invincible. It's just weird. And, and the NPCs that were around were robots. Yeah. That was it. We didn't have anything else. Okay. So we come back to Invincible, and it's this concept. We get to, finally, them adding the NPCs in concept of the last episode. And this last episode was amazing. Right. The last episode this was like really what the last episode good. was like the update where all the stuff is finally here. It's completely done and yep. polished. Yep. The game is finally now ready. A year and a half later. Yes. And and that's that's No where, Man's Sky. That's where I am. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you just got mad with this because I I loved this episode. This episode was, was good. The Adam Eve episode that started off season two was epic and really good. We Are you had talking some, about the that the, little one off. Yeah, the yeah, Adam Eve's yeah. like her as a kid, like we're telling her origin story. Really good. Really good. Like, they have the ability to tell really good stories. The comic book apparently has really good stories in it, and yet they... they None of them show up here. Why did we have so many episodes in the middle of this that nothing was happening, or we were dealing with the same issues, and then we finally get to this? And it's the end. And it's it's good, and it's epic, and I'm going, I'm hungry for more. And re-watching episode one after... But now we have to wait for however long it's going to take for season three to get out. And with the you right. know, writers, like the writer strikes and, you know, animator strikes still going on, who knows how long this is going to drag out for. Right. We already had this season delayed by a, quite a bit because yeah. of it. And, you know, and, you know, COVID and, you know, yeah. all, yep. blah, 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 you know, we've all heard it. But still. But that's that's. Are they going to give us another rushed product next season? Right. I really hope not. I really hope that people kind of get on their nerves and say like, hey, we don't want this formula. Yeah. We need season one. Season one is what we want. 
And I get that, like, it's it's like asking a band to put out the same album every time. But if something works, it works. And what was good if about If it ain't broke, don't one. fix it. What was good? Me and Blaine, after, after last uh, episode, we watched season one, episode one. And re-watching it even again. I love it. It's so good because... It's fantastic. The first episode, it's kind of milk toast and eggs. It's very bland in a way until the very end. Right. But it's setting up their story and action as well and concept and training and And, and a story that's happening. provided in a way that keeps it intriguing. Yes. And it's moving Not, not just like telling you to get it over with so yes. we can move on. It's like yes. it's giving you clues that it wants you to figure out or try to piece together in your head. That makes you want to know the answer at the end. Bingo! You want to know it's what? it's like a it's like a mystery. Like like things are happening. The plot is brewing. You're wondering why things are happening the way they are. Who these people are. What their motives are. Instead, this is just kind of like, hey, I'm Angstrom Levy, and I can go through the multiverse, and I'm bad. Huh. And then he's it's gone. Like, okay, yeah, and, and he's gone for the entire season. Shows up at the very last episode and dies. It was boring. It's it's, it's kind yet, of like in like across the Spider Verse when Miles calls the spot the villain of the week. That's this guy's whole description. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally <laughs> shows up for an episode, has this big catastrophe, goes through the multiverse, <laughs> shows up at the very end and dies. I mean, the yeah. spot isn't dead with the across the multiverse thing, but you know the Spider Verse. But no, that's a that's a good that's a good analogy. I mean, he got that's like good. insanely powerful. And now he's an actual decent threat. This guy. Just got his butt kicked in a matter of maybe twenty minutes. Yeah. If they well, wanted us to live longer, Mark could because... have just gotten angrier way earlier and could have ended this guy within five minutes. But we still had to go through all this, you know, through the multiverse. Yep. How how could they have made Oogie us care boogie. about him? So I think if they would have Probably actually taken episodes? no, take out okay. some of the last two episodes and put in. Angstrom going through the multiverse. Right. Why couldn't we have... Uh, I mean, they, six, they did show him going through the multiverse like a couple times, mm -hmm. but like for like a split second and saying like, I'm home. Yeah. What what did that even mean? What was the point of putting that yeah. post credit scene in when it gave us absolutely no information whatsoever? Yeah. I mean, it was cool to see him in action for a bit after being gone for quite literally the entire season. Right. But... Where does it come in? It didn't at didn't, all. We didn't ever see if Angstrom really did have the power right. to, to kill Mark. If they really I mean, it showed, him, it showed Mark's killing him. Yeah, we should have seen him going through some of the multiverses, it just seems like, taking out some of them. It seems like his motives were just not, not well, he was He was psychotic. I mean, yeah, he was psychotic. He was barely functional, but it still, it, it but was at a, the same time, not it was, interesting. It, yeah, it just wasn't interesting. I was like, okay, snore. What's next? Yeah. I really only, I mean, the really thing, like only things I cared about this episode were Mark and Alan and Omni-Man. Yeah. Genuinely. That's the only things I cared about this episode. The rest of it was throwaway. Hmm. Wow. I mean, the Angstrom fight was cool. It was cool to see that happen and get some more character development from Mark because we get to see Mark be stronger I like. I personally think that this is like one of the moments we, that where Mark has been the strongest he's been through the entire show. Mm. I mean, he really let loose on this guy, and he's a Viltrumite because his except power for, was showing during that his, scene. Except for his black eye. Yeah, right. And kiss. <sighs> Stop. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I don't know why they made, animated it to look like lips, but, but they yeah. did. It's weird. But it's yeah. gross. This is probably the strongest we've seen Mark through the entire series. Well, and it was kind of cool for, to see it. Thank you for ranting. Yeah, absolutely. You took, you took that rant that I, I don't had ever do it, but I do it because it's worth it this time. Good. I feel like I can explain this season just like something else. It feels like a teen drama season. Ooh. Ooh. Beginning. No one cares about Mark and Amber. This is really a superhero good. show. I'm not watching High School Musical. <laughs> okay. Really good beginning. Good episode. grief. Get people <laughs> interested. Really good oh episode at the beginning. Get people interested. Every episode in between, garbage. No one wants to watch yeah, it. Oh, oh boo hoo. Your relationship is dysfunctional because he's a superhero and you're not. Okay. Grow up and break up. Last episode's good. What is the big Bye. deal? I really don't understand. Okay. Why Amber had to be such a huge, <laughs> huge portion of the show. 
And that's that's the reality that's so hard about all of this. It's the relationship that's of a superhero. I, that should be in the background consistently throughout the show. Were they showing Red Rush and his girlfriend throughout the entirety of season one? No. Like a couple scenes, maybe. Just one episode, he died. And I get that Mark is the main character, but even then, no one cares. And if they do, you're really watching the show for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I love this. All right. So really quickly, for just this episode, what is your rating for just this episode? Ooh. Let's start with Blaine. I'd go with an 8 or 9. I really enjoy this episode. Okay, which well, one? 8 or 9? That's a pretty big difference. Yeah, it needs to be, we need specifics here, man. We've gone to like we've gone to decimal points in our ratings before. We need we need, yep. we need specifics. I haven't seen the entire series yet. That's not fair. Trust me. Um, this from what from what you know, the last episode. Yeah, and what I've seen. You're just trying to take this episode in with a grain of salt because you had to review the recap. It's apparently part of the episode, so you know everything. Go ahead. Well, it gives recap. context to what's been <laughs> brought up. The recap is important. <laughs> Skip it all you like, but the recaps are important because it gives you context on things that are to come later when in the episode. When they show us more of Amber. Oh, I forgot. There is a scene we totally didn't talk about. What? The the mummy. Oh, yeah. That guy. What? The what? thing that didn't matter. The, just like, it didn't oh, matter at all. Well, something, he, he something shows flew out, out of season it. one. And yeah. nothing no, happened. I don't think so that anything other flew series. out of there. Oh, um, did he it just was, it was close just, it all again and make it all I'm, disappear so those ladies are going to die in there too? Yeah. Okay, so funny thing was it was from season one, this mummy it gets discovered by a guy, and then these two girls are going in there to, to open it, and because Mark and Omni-Man had flew past and didn't even realize that they were somebody exploring it, and this mummy was trying to possess somebody, and they closed it and shut it back down, and they didn't even realize that they did it. And then the mummy wakes up and goes, wait, you're both female. I have to. And it's so funny because the girls go, well, that's that's sexist. It's just, a, <laughs> it's just like, right. That's literally all they had to say yeah. about that. Was like, that's sexist. And the mummy was like, I, I have to inhabit a male. It's like, to I'm, get out of here. I'm, I'm a being that's quite literally thousands of years old. Do you think that women's rights were established in his time? <laughs> I don't think he cared. No, it was just like the, if we're really specific, thinking about it here, it's a specific curse that he has. Like he has to inhabit a male my, body to get out for some reason. What if it wasn't? He's just like, I just don't want to be a girl. I just want to be a guy. <laughs> right. Is that I, okay. Okay. All right. But anyway, women are inferior. <laughs> You're gonna get monetized. Might want to cut that out for legal reasons. That's a joke. <laughs> okay, Peter. And of course, it is a joke. Oh my, okay. So, <laughs> all right, we're, yeah. At, at, at that point, though, it just then There's gonna be an Mark flies over three. it, and again, it. I think it gets covered again, so those ladies might die, too. Yeah. There's gonna be an episode. But didn't one of the girls powers. have powers? She had super strength, but she couldn't lift the door again, so they might be. She stuck. said she can lift a small truck. Yeah, and then she couldn't lift it again. Yeah. So it was bad. Yeah, Very they had to use a truck. car jack to get it open. <laughs> to keep it open for a little bit. Okay, so Blaine, what's your rating and why? I'd say an eight and a half. Just going middle. I think it was a really good episode. Okay. Um, really weird for his fight. I thought it was a good fight, but really weird how he's just kind of stupid. Mm. I mean, even what's his face says he's like, "You're stupid, like all the other universes." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, like Angstrom said that Mark yeah. is stupid. Like every other universe. Which is funny when the guy is tweaking out for half the fight because he keeps having these memories and can't handle his emotional maturity level. You're like all the other marks. Really but funny how the kettle calls the pot black, huh? Okay. Really funny. Well, what is happening right now? We've lost the plot. All right, Will, <laughs> what's your, what's your the rating? The plot was lost halfway during this <laughs> What season? was your rating for this episode alone? 8.7. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to rate it a little bit better than Blaine. I simply for the relief factor that we're finally sort of starting to get back in this groove where emotional ties are severed. It's back to superhero stuff finally. And, you know, all these big things are starting to happen within this universe. Mm. Like, you know, we're fi I mean, also we're finally getting to the relationship that everyone has wanted since season one, finally, you know, and then, Alan and Omni Man are about to do stuff together in that prison to like get out and stuff, which I'm sure you know is would be cool to see. 
Um, I really hope that Alan can convince Omni Man to do that, even though Omni Man is like pretty much defeated and like kind of set in his ways with what's happened. Um, Invincible is finally starting to let loose and not hold back, which is good. Because if he wants to have any chance of fighting the Viltrumite Empire, he needs to quit being a big baby. And, you know, it's kind of harsh to say that, but, I mean, that's really how it is. He really needs to just stop crying and be a superhero, because that's what he is. (laughs) Yes. Tears aren't going to save Earth, buddy. There is no no better way to slice that cake than that. throw the tear 10,000 miles per hour. Right. (laughs) Speaking of crying, baby, there's a certain other superhero show uh, where there's a broccoli as a main character. Wow. For hair. What a a way to describe it. No word, thank you. Yeah. What? Uh, So we got Invincible as a crybaby. Deku as a crybaby. Just like, at least one of them fights while not crying. You know who doesn't cry as the main hero for a superhero show? Who? One Punch Man. Just saying. He doesn't show any emotion. Just... Exactly. Except whenever the he misses the sale at the no, supermarket. You, if you make <laughs> him miss a sale or destroy his coupons, yeah, then you're done. Don't, okay. I don't know. Uh, let's, let's do this. Really. <laughs> you don't know One Punch Man? I know about One Punch One Man. Punch! I've never right. seen it. You should. What? It's beautiful. Or My Hero Academia. Okay. I don't recommend that. I know what we're doing after this episode. episode. Okay. I will happily watch One Punch Man. I love that. I show. love that That's show. That's so Street Fire. All right. Sonic. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. <laughs> if I take this episode by itself, I actually am at like a 9.5. I okay. I really enjoyed it. That's a it. bit more generous was, than I thought you'd be. Uh-huh. There was action. Considering Amber was in there. That's really that's Yeah, point. considering that Amber was in there, that's really strange. Point three is taken off for Amber showing up at all. But since she didn't talk, that's all we have is point three off. So where does the point two come in? The black eyes. <laughs> But there was three black guys, not two. Trust me. I'm I'm rounding. (laughs) All right. They're rounding. Yeah. Nolan didn't know about the other two, so his kind doesn't count entirely in the same way. Um, (laughs) So. (laughs) Stop. But if we were to rate the entire season, what would we put it as? And I guess, Will, it'll just be me and you on this part since Blaine hasn't seen the full season. That is really, really tough because I really, I mean, as much as I have to complain about this season, I really did like it a lot. Um, yeah, some of the uh-huh. storyline choices were questionable, uh-huh. but. Uh huh. <laughs> Amber called. She wants her date back. Right, yeah. So did uh, uh, Duplicate. So for last season being a, t- a complete 10 out of 10, for this, I'm probably going to have to give it, it's between a 7 and 8. 8 is my really? max. Yeah, I, I really hate to not give it a 10. It's a great season. Don't get me wrong. Season 2. But yeah, season 2. You're, you, you're thinking even about a 10. Wow. I I can't. It's not a perfect season. Because if it was a perfect season, I wouldn't have had my rant earlier. Yeah. Yep. If it followed the rhythm that season one did and stayed true to what it was good at, this would have been a 10 out of 10 season. And probably it would have been like more like a 15 out of 10 season with all the plot stuff happening. Mm-hmm. If they just executed it a little bit better. Yep. The execution just wasn't there for me. Yep. The plot points were great. The character development, pretty good. Mm. You know, except for the obvious. Yeah. So what are you actually landing on for your rating? I'm going to give it an 8. Okay, wow. I'm impressed. Stick them with eight. Okay. What, that I'm not giving it a 10? Or no. You're impressed that I'm giving it uh, such a high rating? I am. I really am. So, what's your rating then? You sure you want to know? I want to know. Because it might have, it actually might influence my answer. I'm not saying that I'm easily yeah. influenced, but I could just be giving it a little bit too much because I just like the series and I'm completely biased for it. I think I'm at like a 5.5. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because this That's episode, rough. This episode reminded me so much of what it should be. Yeah. And we yeah. didn't have that for two episodes straight. Bad. Yeah. And other episodes were not great, but they weren't this, the last two episodes, bad. 
My answer's moving down to a six. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I just, it, it's hard because it's like. That, the, you brought that, up a very fair point. It, it could have been that. They had the ability to do this the entire time and they didn't. It felt Why? Like, it felt like we were on a roller coaster that wasn't going up and down in a good way. It was just stuck somewhere. Yeah. And it was stuck on Debbie and Amber for so long. It was the Debbie and then Amber Mark relationship stuff, but Debbie with her issues. And it, it right. just got boring. It did get very boring. And so the first season is a 10 out of 10. Like every moment was fascinating and interesting. Even the parts that you didn't necessarily agree with in the same way or always find it as interesting, they still actually were fascinating because you knew that they connected somewhere. And not everything connected here in the same way. And yeah. Angstrom was – I think that the other thing that makes that such a lower rating for me is because we had to wait so long in between the season. And what we waited for was not good. And yeah. then the very last episode happens, and it is really good. But it, it's hard because it doesn't make any sense that we can have this epicness – and maybe the first episode was kind of interesting, but I, I remember when we first talked about that, it was so much going on. Yeah, that it, it was, was just hard to follow with and really take to heart what was going on because it was just yeah a constant onslaught of information dumping. Yeah, It was just so much. You couldn't handle it all. You couldn't even remember some of the main plot points because of all the stuff being brought up. It was actually pretty frustrating. Yeah. Which... So- they didn't really do during season one. And I get that it's season one. There aren't a lot of plot points to bring up because we're just starting the show. But at the right. same time, with the information given, they executed it very well. And this season, they could have done the same thing, you know, but they had to just, they had to dump everything off at the front end yeah. and then have an extremely agonizing slow burn on the back end and then end out with a bang. Yeah, I just that, almost wonder if the uh, comic why? was like that. Like, I guarantee it's not. Because <laughs> I don't see how it would have survived this section if it was like this. Comic like, people, please, please say something if you can confirm or deny that. Because I actually am curious. Yeah. If it, if it, the pacing is anything like the comic series, because if it is, that that's just rough, honestly. Mm-hmm. Last I knew, I don't think it is, if I'm correct. Okay. Because it's more of the fighting and less mm-hmm. of Amber. And, and Which is why people loved it. And it got turned into this show. Yeah. So uh, that's that's where I'm at, Will. is is a 5.5 at the very least. It's, yeah. just, it's barely above average to me because I, I, I still am interested in some of the characters. It, it was a decent season. There was just but points this that is not, lost. Not good enough. For it just me. lost the plot sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we just went completely off the rails with this personal stuff that really I yeah. couldn't care less about. And I thought this last episode I don't care about Mark and Amber's dysfunction. I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will I will die on that hill valiantly. I do not care. I want to see Mark fight things. I want to see him grow as a character. I want to see what's going on with the Viltrumites eventual attack on Earth. I want to see what's going on with Omni Man. Like the important yeah. stuff that the entirety of season one revolved around has been put on the back seat this entire season. And it's just really frustrating to watch. Yeah. There's better ways. I to feel tell like story. that Omni man would have played a much bigger part in the season than he really did. I feel like Mark would have played a much bigger part of this season than he really did. But really what we got was just not good. Just wasn't good enough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. Not, not a consistent but good season. Yeah, in the same. But way. that's really all I have to say about it. Yeah, I've given my rating. I've spoken my piece. Do you feel better now? That's season two. Season. Two I do over. feel better, but now I actually am genuinely concerned about what season three is going to look like. Right. If this is what we're going with for a final product, right? I really hope that season three is not the same. I really hope that they take some notes on their mistakes and I hope that the fandom gets in their face about it because really to go from an absolute 10 out of 10 season to a six to a, like even a 5.5 something is clearly wrong here so we need to fix it <laughs> before it goes so off the rails that we can't right before it pulls like I'm trying to think of a good 
It's fine. Before it pulls The Walking Dead. What? Really, really interesting on the front end and over time just gets more and more boring and uninteresting to the point where I just, I, I don't even watch it. I can't remember where I'm at in the show because it's been so long since I watched it. I used to watch that show all the time because it was really good and I was Which hooked show? on the, the Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Started off really strong and then just, yeah. just went downhill piddled over time. Yeah, just piddled place. around and went for these stupid plot points that I don't care about. Yep. Well, that's season two. Thank you for hanging out with us for so long, but we just needed to really talk through it because now we're at the end of this season and it was a rough, weird journey. Compared we have to talked about one. this longer than the episode has a runtime. <laughs> that's tells you something. In a way. Yes, that does. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Like, share and subscribe. And please let us know your thoughts. Um, obviously you're seeing some of our, just our hearts, just, in an honest spot in a frustrated yeah. spot and just understand that we're, we're trying to really process through right after watching it, how we feel. And it's, it's hard after a little bit because you just start realizing what, what could have been and what has been. And now is not, I really hope that in the future we can kind of treat this like, uh, kind of like, an album that your favorite artist releases that you're not really sure of when it first came out, but then over time you learn to like it. I really hope that I can treat this season that way in the future. You say that I'm going to make you rewatch the two episodes of Amber and Mark. I'm going to skip them. Just no, no, you're going to watch <laughs> just those scenes. Just that. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Like, share and subscribe. Thank you all. And have a great rest of your day.